difficulties are finished. I hope you uh, find us here at our new chat or our new stream here. Welcome to Champs Chicago Live. Mr. Mike Mason there filming the hot action here with Hoobs and Job. We've got Team Molten Arts over here right now. They've got this piece they've been working on for about two weeks down in Huntington Beach. They bring it out, do a little bit of work, put it back in. And then come and gather their thoughts. Would you like to say a few words, Mr. Mike Mason? Uh, no, I mean, we're chilling. Appreciate you all out there. Sorry we had some technical difficulties. We still don't know why that other stream ended, but we're back, baby. And uh, yeah, this is just getting kicked off here. We got fire inspectors in the house. We're doing it right, keeping it legal. <laughs> I think they might be looking for a bribe or something, but. <laughs> I'm just playing. Greasing the wheels over here in Chicago. Yeah, we are in Chicago. You know how we do it. <laughs> little donation to the Jimmy Hoffa Fund or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's going to be wearing cement boots here shortly. Yeah, yeah. I'm <laughs> sleeping with the fishes. <laughs> All right, anyways. Nice, nice. Being yeah, so that's, that's this action here. Yeah, that's what's um, going down, man. Can I flip him around to see you? Uh, yeah, if you'd like. Oh, what here dogs? we are. Hey, hey we're up in this. Hey, homies. Thanks for joining us. Both of you that are here right now, and yeah, I hope, hope you can join us here again soon. <laughs> Come on back. Um, yeah, and then so we yeah, got, again. Look at the, the lonely you seen over here. Let's go check in with the dog. Team Everdream is still working on getting here. They had some flight delays now that you know COVID's over. Yeah. All yeah. the fits are running short, but you seen us representing. Look at that fantastic shirt he's got going on. So I take it drains are going to be attached into those places that are plumbing. Flash guard. Uh, this thing? Oh, you're. Oh, yeah, it helps. I mean, that's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think splash guard. I think we know this thing. Right on. Yeah. Cool. Do you mind if we sneak around? Get a better view of this fastening? Feel free. Cool. Oh. Yes. Sneak on through there and give it the. He was saying this contraption that he's using has got little markers so he doesn't have to like think too hard about where he's going. Do a little grinding, squish, squish. Turn it to the next spot. Grindy, squish, squish. It looks like it's on a, a handle. And the handle just uh, connects into that that spot. If 
This table's a rock and don't come knocking. <laughs> Take you back around to the front side so you can see some of the, uh, the fanciness of this tool here. So you can see it's down by his hand there. That's where that uh, the handle's going into the the other thing. Only technical terms here at Torch Talk. If Carrie's talking. Where'd you get this fancy thing? Uh, the machine? Yeah. So this is kind of a hybrid because this is a Bathatron. This is my buddy Adam's Bathatron. Okay. Uh, I had to bring this because it's way smaller than mine. I have the Ultratech machine, so I brought my Ultratech arm, which is the best arm in the business, and put it in my bag because it fit, it fit well. And I couldn't bring the Ultratech case. It was just... Enormous, like, yeah. Longer. Right, yeah. I could probably get a custom one. They'll That's call it the Yushi. I'm going to do that next. Get a custom, you know, the uh, travel paper, one. So I can travel with my Ultratech because it has a high torque motor. You can't stop like this motor. If I push down hard enough, it will stop. Yeah. Low tech uh, solution, yeah. especially with the, the low tech cardboard splash guard, you know. <laughs> I, I do this all the time, it works so well. Oh, yeah, the like cardboard absorbs some of the moisture, so true, and then it just sort of evaporates. It works great. Low tech solutions are sometimes the best solution. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm not getting splashed anymore. It's great. There's a little bit of splash going on right here. I can probably put some more paint there. But at least it's not uh, getting me. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> here he's got the fancy cam he's gonna get the nice high definition shots and put some sort of show special together for you guys to see the uh, rainbows versus demons piece or whatever we've got going on here the battle the terminator, the terminator. The terminator. nice nice Interesting. So I don't know. Uh, maybe we're in like, maybe we're like in a dead zone right here or something. But I can see video, so maybe YouTube's just saving it for you guys. Um, let me see if I can walk around and, and get some video back. Um, it's not telling me that anything's wrong. It's, Last time I checked, I had 5G. Uh, just uh, let me know, I guess, if you if you can see something or if you can't see something.
another uh, spot because they got the piece out. Let's go see the Terminator or the Terpinator rather, right? So I hope you guys can see this now. I think it's just reception in this spot of the building, really. That helped. I know you guys are on the slight lag, but let me know if the video comes back here shortly. All right, awesome. I don't know what I did, but we're back. Um, the screen shows that I've got something the whole time, so I'm going to try and not touch the screen anymore because I apparently did something. Um, and I'll show you guys around again. So hopefully, when this feed is over, you guys can see all the stuff that perhaps you missed. Got the whole team here. So for those of you just popping in, if maybe you didn't hear it earlier, this is Team Molten Art. Thank you for being here. Got WJC, Hoobs, and Job. Got this piece they've been working on for two weeks. They all met down in Southern California at Hoops' spot in Huntington Beach. Uh, got the lowdown from Yushin. We got kind of a rainbow piece going on with Team Everdream, and here we got the Turpinator. And you can definitely see all the artists' hands in this work. That's kind of the idea behind a collab. This piece is sick. I've been warned it's going to be a lot of this. We've got the piece, goes in the kiln. Bring it out, work for 10 minutes or so, put it back in the kiln, catch our breath, hydrate. Plan for the next steps. <laughs> All right, so these guys are taking a break, getting getting ready for the next step. Thank you guys for hanging in there through the technical difficulties. This is a kind of a new format Mike and I are trying out this year. There's only six competitors, and it's kind of silly to have both of us on a on a nice camera like that. So we got a live not just one, we've got several live streams coming at you um, over the course of the, the show here. While well, Mike's got the, the super dank footage with the good camera, he's gonna edit up a show special of sorts. 
we'll bring you back over here so you guys can see this amazing Facitron and uh, Ultra Tech arm going on here, the one we were talking about earlier. Video disappeared because I touched something, so I'm not touching it anymore. <laughs> um, it was over here. I think I zoomed in and somehow video for them disappeared, but I saw it the whole time, so I don't know what's going on. Hopefully it shows up in the replay, but... Are we good now? We're good now. All right. We're back. It's Curious for his day. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Trial by fire. All right, so again, there's that fancy arm. Yeah, it's just like a different arm than the Facitron itself. You're just using the... Gotcha. That's why I had a hybrid. You're a glass master. that while we're watching him do the next steps here he said he had this whole series of wheels here right he said he's skipping a wheel usually he does 300 grit to 600 grit to 1200 grit and then cerium and he's not doing a flame polish on this he said in the hot shop a lot of times they'll use a 300 and then go straight to a cerium because the soft glass is so much softer but of course you know we're working in borosilicate here and he says there's not a lot of scratches, so he went straight from the 300 to the 1200 now, and then he's gonna do the cerium polish after that, is that right? Yep. Yeah, this is a great show for anybody that uh, wants to watch some really great artists work. There's uh, It's a nice intimate setting here. ABR's got some uh, special tubing with uh, Boro Batch, I think. 
that they're offering here just at the show. Special uh, green and UV pink tubing. Uh, thanks to all the sponsors that are helping helping this make this happen. ABR is one of the one of the champ sponsors. Get you a list of some sponsors here, and we can we can shout out some thanks. Oh yeah, that's that's on my phone. That's my cheat sheet. So uh, yeah, and Glass Central Station sponsors. Thanks to everybody there too for helping us get here. Champs is one of those sponsors bringing us out here to help share all this footage with all of you folks that aren't able to make it. Mountain Glass is one of those sponsors. GTT. Got the Fresh Glass Company, High Volume Oxygen. Got uh, Bethlehem Burners as a champ sponsor as well. Got some big prizes for these guys. I don't know how the decision is going to get made. There's $30,000 of prizes being given away at the end of this. Uh, Team Everdreen versus Team Molten Arts. It looks at this point like Yushin's going to be collecting all of it. <laughs> Damn, that's rough. 4 a.m., yeah, so. Yeah. No, you got to be well rested to do this stuff. You don't want to take all that week's worth of work that they did at the home studio and get here tired and. Yeah, no, that would be awful. So this, this uh, I was talking with Victoria a little bit earlier. This Champs Glass Games is a little bit different than some of the past Glass Games. Um, instead of, you know, the big arena with a bunch of people doing multiple different uh, projects with different parameters, the parameters here were pretty much wide open. You guys weren't given a lot of, a lot of rules, right? Just they wanted museum quality pieces. They want nice pieces. So these guys got to work together beforehand. Uh, Team Everdreen out in Colorado, they've, they've been working together for about a week, it sounded like on this already. We've got sections, sections put together by, uh, I'm blanking out. Um, who are your team members again, Yushin? That's right, JC and Nate Myers. WJC, sorry. Okay, all right. Right on, and Those of you just joining us, look at this fancy thing. The Ultra Tech Fastening Arm. See how that handle just goes right in the middle there or on the end of that arm. It's got dials. Doesn't have to make any marks. Just dials it into where he wants to go. Polishes one side. Does a little turn turn. Starts on the next section. says at home he's got an Ultratech fastening machine. Uh, he's got the little Facetron here because it's a little bit more portable. But he's got to be careful with the pressure that he puts on so he doesn't stop the, the little Facetron motor. Inspector checking for leaks, some fancy little tool. That's kind of cool. No bubble testing here. 
Is it no bubble test in here? That's a pretty fancy little tool. What is that? Right on. Oh, cool. Are there no leaks so far? All right, fantastic. And Team Molten Arts. We got Hoobs over here. He's had a pretty busy summer so far. He just was out on the West Coast at Gas and then DFO and now here. Crazy summer. He got to uh, work on that piece, the, uh, the International Year of Glass collaboration that Eric Goldschmidt organized. Interrupted a conversation. I'm sure it was important. I'm going to go over here. Let's <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Do I, you want to thank any sponsors while you're at it? <laughs> all of them. All of them. That's not what we do right after we set up the silicone glass. Right, right, yeah. Just two world sessions. Okay, all right. <laughs> this this session brought to you by Hawaii Washington. Yeah, so uh they got the homies Bunsen burner, adjustable adjustable. Oh nice. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, let's let's, let's go see this. The Crazy Legs Bunsen Burner, right? The Crazy Legs Bunsen Burner? Mad Hatter Glass, all right. Look at that directional. Oh, it's okay. That's what teammates are for. <laughs> Again, no leaks here. We're all good. That little thing sniffs out leaks. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. It is pretty cool. Everybody's fascinated by it. Like, what does this thing do? Yeah. <laughs> you think they'd like, after like a chilly dinner at this shop, Some you know, they'd be like. <laughs> Bring it out, let's sniff her methane. Yeah, yeah, it's like, there's no smelted delta kind of thing, man. We're getting to the bottom of this. Oh god. Oh, that's what the sniffer is for. Clearly. Alright, so we are yeah, we, we do look like, like we're getting out. ready. It's about to get lit over here. We're gonna enjoy this together now. This magical moment. Nonchalant. Yeah, the noble hooves. Yes. <laughs> you have that stoic pose there, man. That's Karsten. Karsten, all right. I think I've been calling him by the wrong name. <laughs> yeah. 
gotta be like, see, Dizzle, what up, baby? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if you're just joining us, this is Team Molten Art. We got Hooms, we got Carson, we got Job. They've been working on this piece for two weeks down in Southern California at Hooms Place in Huntington Beach. Job's based in Phil just outside of Philadelphia. Carson's up in Oregon. They got the Turpinator getting ready to come out of the kiln. They're going to make some sort of attachment. Is that what his name is, huh? The Turpinator? Turpinator, yes. Alright, that's, yeah. that's the lowdown from Eugene, I guess. I don't know. Sniffing out gas here. Yeah, yeah we got to yeah, get in on this. We got this fire inspector action here. They're not playing games in Chicago, dogs. This is uh, pretty cool to see. Um, yeah, no, no, you got like the technology, man. This is uh, this is like Elon Musk's fire inspection or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! All right, Stephen. <laughs> Maybe you need to take him to the gym. <laughs> he was mentioning earlier he took a, a break from the champ circuit and having a kid, he's, you know, like, calmed down a little bit more. Apparently he used to party hardy back in the day. Yeah. Moved out to the country, it, drinking yeah. that whole milk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a healthy weight. <laughs> All right, here it comes. Party time. Suddenly got warmer over here. live view that you guys are getting during the event out here at Champs Chicago. Mike's got the fancy cam, so you'll get the detailed views and the show wrap up. Skill, yes, they've been practicing this.
that this could be brought down a little bit and kind of stuffed into the bottom right there. I don't know. We can screw it away. Looks like it's going to be a little bit right now. It's not going to And now everybody can breathe again. Very cool. Indeed. Well, Yush is just faceting still. Um, the can I homies. Turn it What's that? Can I turn it around? Yeah, sure. What up, players? Um, yo, so I was going to suggest Carrie maybe take you all over to ABR's booth, just see what it's like supply tip, because Yush is over there, uh, still faceting, and the dogs here are definitely taking like a 10 minute break before that thing comes out again. So yeah, why don't, man, why don't you take them on a little uh, ride over to ABR, say hi to Ross. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Alright. Alright. I'll do that. Much love, homies. Bye, Mike. We'll see ya. All right, so this is what you see if you're at the Glass Games, looking out. We've got lots of fun stuff for smoke shops to come in and check out. Grassroots here with all their apparel. The artists all have pieces on display so you can see what they're about. All right, I'll come back and give you a closer view of some of those in a moment. We had some... Uh, some race cars zipping around earlier too. Got some fun footage of that. Um, but yeah, so here we've got it. The ABR booth, they've got some specials, like I said. Dip devices over there. Some more glass. Here's our little glass section. Like I said, the Champ Chicago, she was a little bit more intimate. Um, Freddie's working his magic over here at ABR. Looks like Ross is getting ready to go social. <laughs> it's 
So yeah, this is what AVR brought for you all. If you were here, you could touch it, rub it, roll around in it. They brought some special tubing from Boro Batch. It's like a green and UV pink tubing. They got all the tools that you might have missed. They got your, your lenses, graphite tools. You even got some torches in case you forgot those. And then look at all these tools. I don't know if you guys can see that piece that Team Molten Art is working on, but there are opals all over that thing. They got opals in the eyes. Oh, we got some uh, art units over here as well. Ross, do you want to say hi to anybody? You should. We're going to say hi to Ross real quick. We get to see Ross all hey. the time at all the trade shows. AVR, thank you. Thank you. Are you having a good time so yeah, far? Yeah, James is amazing. Yeah, yeah, right on. Anyway, you got, this is Ross. This is one of the guys that packs all your order as well. I mean, maybe not personally, but he does a great do job of making sure that it gets to you. He sent me a birthday card when I got my torch uh -huh. for my birthday. That was so sweet. Yeah. These guys are the best. Anyway, we're going to flip yeah. it around so Ross doesn't have to feel like he's on camera the whole time. All day. <laughs> Absolutely. And then, of course, if Ross is working, you gotta bring Freddie out because Freddie talks to everybody. Freddie tries to hand out nuts all the time, too. Bring snacks for everybody. And he's with Homeblown Glass down in Arizona. This is what you gotta do. If you guys wanna do this trade show thing, you gotta think about talking to people because it's a big part of selling things. So if you don't like talking to people, maybe you wanna find somebody else that can talk for you. Freddy's a, Freddy's a talker. Got a, looks like Team Molten Arts over here. All right, we got some job pieces. I might take you around later with a little bit more of a close-up view on some of this stuff if you guys would like. So monopod makes it a little bit more difficult, but look at these lovely pieces. The nice thing about being a competitor is you've got your stuff over here for sale and you've got your, your reps doing all the work for you, talking with people. So, uh, take a little tour of our glass section over here. Yeah, so uh, Elbow's doing this thing with, with, with plushies now. Check that out. Last section, Chad G there. Firebug tools out here. We got some artwork, everything you might need for a head shop, for your glass shop, for your smoke shop. Jellyfish glass is over here again too. Always like to see jellyfish glass. And back over here to the competitors. It looks like some people are out of bed. So yeah, these guys are light didn't get in till 4 a.m. So they slept in so they don't ruin all this work that they've been putting into this piece. Personal sniffing going on. Do you smell anything? Do you smell anything? The fire marshal has this tool he's been going around with and like sniffing all the things. That's pretty cool. All right, Team Everdream is getting ready to join the part. Hey.
of a low-key glass games this time instead of 40 competitors. That's coming up in July at Summer Champs. Got all the competitors there for that. This is a nice intimate competition with, you know, low stakes prizes. There's $30,000 going to be given away. Given away for this session here, right? Uh, one team's going to get $20,000, one team's going to get $10,000. They're going to split that up. So set up. This is what it looks like if you're competing. Right? Here's where you're at. Got your kilns all set up. Getting ready over here for Team Everdream. Just getting set up. In case you didn't get to see it before, we're back here with Eugene. He's still doing some faceting. How's it coming? I'm assuming you're one of those people that likes cold working. I, I didn't say I love it, but I've got where it's kind of a meditation where you're like cutting. Yeah. And you can just, you have to pay attention to what you're doing, but you can also zone off and get like a flow. Right. So I don't know if that makes any sense. But no, absolutely it does. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it can yeah, be so really tedious. So you probably. Tedious, but it's, it's awesome when you get really good. Probably don't want to drink three espressos and then try it or anything like that, right? Yeah, you can do that. Your arm stabilizes everything, so it's just pressure. Okay. Drawing clips with espresso, you know, you don't want to do what? Fascinating all day, yeah, yeah. All right. What do you think of espresso? I'm going to do mine just a little bit. There you go. Wake up after like the lull and Yeah, shout out to Nate, he's he's here now too. Looking pretty well rested, I'd say. I don't know if you guys can see what's happening here. A little push down, snap it back up, rotate it, push it down, snap it back up, a little push a button, rotate it. Makes easy work or quick work. Are you on the 300 grid again? <laughs> no more. <laughs> Some people bite their nails and then laugh them all.
Queen Victoria there in the background, the, the Queen of the Glass Games.
see the uh, excitement that the glass games and getting to see live glass blowing brings to the show floor. It's the buyers and folks walking around get to see a little bit of what goes into the making of these pieces. questions for the artist throw them up in chat and there's you know a little low here and there and I can chat with them at some point we can answer some of those burning questions that you have the homies want us to be here honestly hey, I mean it's Della Luna hey what oh shit Good nice to, to see, see you. you yeah shit so glad you're able to be here with us virtually right thanks for tuning in just oh. asked her waiting to happen Yeah, we plan to be live for a couple of hours at a time if y'all are down. Um, and then we need a break to recharge the phones and stuff like that. So we got another hour if y'all got another hour. And I think this is also about to start picking up here, homies. Right, like part of the team didn't make it due to flight issues. Uh, so you just is, showing up, yeah. Yeah, Yush has just been over there, lonely man. And, uh, but I think it's really about to pick up. Nate is here now, and so we're gonna have more variety a little later. So maybe, uh, you know, we're gonna stay live now, but then we're gonna take a break in the afternoon. Shit should be really popping then. But thank you to everybody who's joined in and making this a party. And that, that, that warms my heart. That's why we did this. Uh, split this up with one camera recording with the dank and one camera uh, live for you guys to have a party. Was really intrigued. It's like into this. Yeah, man. He's gonna be a glass blower at the end of the weekend. Right. This is the most involved I've ever seen a fire official. Hi it's, from uh, the UK. Thanks yeah. for checking in. We're worldwide.
here and check out some of these pieces that are uh, in the gallery. We need me. So. I'll have some pieces out. We'll check out some more over here. We got the, the RC cars over here. We got this racing around earlier today. It is fully functional in more ways than one. It's got quite the suspension on it too. Those monster cars getting ready to eat each other alive. Sorry for the jiggledy. Tried to get the gimbal up earlier, but it did not cooperate, so I'm on a monopad, dancing with it. As much as I can. What I did. all set up. We thought we smelled some leaks. He's got a sniffer tool. Hey Mike. Look what I did. What did I do? Oh. Thank you. Yep, yep. All right. There we are again. Sweet. Yeah, it's a uh, moment of downtime here. It is. So yeah, at these times, around. maybe you can just walk him around the, the show. Oh, hey, it's me. <laughs> Yeah. Hello. Yeah. I've been thinking you're sponsored a little bit. Do you want? No. Yeah, got, you Carrie's got, got the on. list. I'm trying. We love all you dogs out yeah. there. Thanks People for being here. In. Yeah. Um, yeah. You should just take him on a little run around the, the booth. And... Okay. What up, Blair? Right on. Well, uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to go check out some of the booths. See what you guys are missing here. We got our glass booth surrounding the glass games. Jellyfish is here as always, representing. You guys want to see what the entire champs floor looks like? I'll take you around, walk around, uh, wait for the teams to get fully set up. Probably have another five minutes or so before anything happens with uh, Team Molten Arts. Team Everdream is getting ready. Once again, stop in at ABR. It's snack time. Woo. Snack time with Freddy. That's, that's beautiful. Right? There's ABR, Ross. Say hey to Ross again. Thanks for your support, Ross. Thanks for bringing all this stuff out here for everybody. Yeah, if you forgot anything, if you're a competitor, you got it here. If you're a glass artist, you're looking to take things home, you got it here. ABR brought some special Boro Batch tubes. They're green and uh, pink UV shifty. Um, we'll take a little walk around this way. We got some dip devices for your alternative smoking needs. Champs organizer Jeff there, right? Just a little bit of what happens on the show floor here. It goes on for a good while. This is a little bit more intimate than some of the shows. Uh, the Vegas show is the next one that's coming up in July out in Vegas. There's gonna be a different Champs Glass Games there. I know I just saw Victoria post about getting ready to um, sign up for that Glass game so you can, can compete. This glass games, there is $30,000 up in the air. Uh, we got $20,000 for the winning team and $10,000 for the, the second place team. There were no real parameters aside from we want some 
gallery, uh, gallery ready pieces. Like I said, if you're at a booth, if you're a glass artist and you're not as good about talking about your work, that's where these guys come in. They can help you sell your work. If you're not, you know, the person that talks about your work all the time, they are gonna represent for you. They're at all of these glass events, taking orders from the buyers. Thank you guys. Got your apparel. And we've got alternative products as well. There's some, uh, you know, anything a, a smoke shop might need. You know, you gotta fill out your, your products. So here we are back again. Right, guys we're gonna do a little dip here real quick sorry if I get you uh, dizzy all right there we go thanks for hanging in there piece comes out of the kiln, there's a crowd all over the place. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in. I made Mike stay to see you in chat. Love seeing all you guys in chat. It's great to see that Della Luna and Sugar are here virtually. They're watching with us too. Got all our regulars in chat too. And back into the count she goes. All right. Right on, we've got virtual collabs going on, right? Isn't that what it's called then? Hey Zachary, thanks for being here. Um, still kind of working on getting things set up over here. 
these guys got in really late last night so uh, with the whole everybody getting ready to go out and do things again a lot of the hospitality and airlines they're having a hard time keeping up so you know flights get canceled get moved around so team everdream um, they got in really late last night like 4 a.m. so they're here now they got their beauty sleep make sure that they can work on this piece all fresh and they've been working on it for like at least a week make sure they're all nice and fresh and well rested before starting to put this piece together this is potentially a twenty thousand dollar piece right here yeah you're way more a twenty dollars artist <laughs> i know right like you guys, price, you huh? keep the piece and you win the money and then you keep the piece and can sell it? Yeah? Uh, yeah, I mean, I sell the piece and I it. Yeah. My 20000 was referencing the prize money. That, that's what that was referencing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, $30,000, half prize. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. Because that really uh, makes it a toss up, then, you know? Yeah, you know, that changes things. Right, yeah, like who are you creating this for? Right. So we've got an audience question for you. Yeah. Della Luna wants to know why you pop the holes before you're faceting. She wants to know a little bit more about the process and the ideas. So I probably should have plugged these up, but honestly, I don't want to plug them up because uh, there's going to be two that connect to these uh, later. And so while I'm faceting, I'm just going to leave them open. But after I'm done, I'm going to get this piece hot again. I'm gonna close up three of them and leave one open and then do the connection and then I'll open the other one and do a connection and open the other one and do a connection until I get all these updates connected. But for now, these things are just temporarily plugging them up so that no passive dust goes in there. Right. I don't want to be passive dust inside them. I want to be careful. I want to be able to it very well. When you were building this, did you know where you were going to be faceting it, or is that a decision yeah. you made afterwards? Yeah, I knew where I was going to be faceting. Okay, and then you had to put them together hot. You said you don't, you're not cold working the facets. So is that why you put them together and then facet, or? Yeah, well, you know, I'm going to be faceting here, 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 and here, and because I'm doing four things in all the same line. It's probably easier to facet cold. Together when I facet rather than facet. Right on. But it's kind of a time saving thing, like you couldn't do the individual parts when I put it together. But, you know, it's, it's all in how you want to do it. For me, it's a, it's a time saving thing. We spend hours cutting the individual parts. And if you can cut that time down and you're spending it with those individual parts a little bit, yes. Yes. Right on. So I, I hope that answered the question. I, I mean, I. I feel like it certainly answered the question in some shape, way, shape, or form. I hope the question was, I hope I understood the question right, and I hope you guys could hear that, because I don't know if I could repeat that for you. Basically, it's a time saver to be able to put the piece together, and knowing that you're going to fast it, then you don't have to worry about aligning everything that you fasted, and then putting it together hot. And he's got the plugs in there that are going to keep all the extra dust out, so there's no worry there. And 
before making the connections after he's faceted. Of course, go back in the kiln, get it all warm, then make all those connections one at a time. But yeah, if you guys didn't see this earlier, this this arm is pretty sweet. Look at that join. Stick your blow tube in there. That's it. Tighten that up just enough. It allows you to rotate it. There's a little button down in there that you can push and rotate. No need to mark the piece at all. It's got all your all your measurements set. Switch out the wheels. Sand on the going from 300 to 1200 to cerium. There's a 600 pad too, sometimes he skips it. Fire Marshal's back with his special gas sniffing tool. Getting the next two two torches and everything connected. I'm gonna water myself and water the bathroom. Right? <laughs> Like we're getting ready to come out of the kiln here again. Sneak over here. Sneak behind you, Mike. All right, the audience has gathered. We are ready to see the action. Check it out. It's the Turbinator.
So for those of you just tuning in, this is Team Molten Arts that we're looking at right now. We've got Hoobs, Carson, and Jock. They're working on this collab, the Turpinator. They've been working on it for two weeks down in Huntington Beach at Hoops' shop. And a lot of in and out action going on here. Goes in the kiln, it's nice and toasty. Get ready for the next steps, get organized, bring it on out, make a couple of additions, and then do it all over again with lots of smiles. And like I said, if you guys think of any questions that you want me to ask, um, just shoot them up in chat. Try and keep my eyes out for them. Because we do have a couple of lulls, so you know, I, I could totally ask some questions for you. Um, Mr. Mike Mason is back here again with us. You might have seen him in the background there getting his interview on with Nate, right? I mean, yes. That's what it is. When I talk to my dogs, man, it's like, no, that's an interview player. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> you on the spot now, son. No, but anyways, yeah, no, just catching up with the homie, not an, an interview, per se. I know, I know. Yeah, anyways. We got 25 people joining us right now. Oh, yeah, thanks, guys. It's fucking nice to know that y'all are getting to enjoy this right along with us, man. Like I was saying earlier, it's an interesting time because the other the other homies aren't really up into speed yet, just use. And then this one is, you know, in, in for 10, out for 2 or whatever, but... It's just lit. Um, yeah, I have a feeling the afternoon is when this party's really going to pop, so please uh, please join us then as well. Um, yeah, man, that's about all I got to say. Hope you all enjoy this shit. Big shout out to Champs. Shout outs to all the sponsors of our channel. Make this possible. Shout outs to the sponsors that make these glass games possible. I think that's for them over there. North Jersey Diamond Wheel, Bethlehem, ABR. This other shit. UST. Good yeah. Stuff. Awesome. Thanks, Mike. <laughs> and back at it. Let's see. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, go watch Use Fashion some more. Watch Use Fashion some more. We had some yeah. fashion questions that we got right. to, so that was some fascinating fashioning. So much taller. <laughs> I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask Adam that when we get back over there again. That's a that's a good question. For now, we're back to the fascinating, fascinating, the fascinating, fascinating world of Yushin. Anything to clean it before you flame work that again? Ultrasonic and clean it or anything though. No, just really good. Oh, like it dries on it, so you gotta re wet it to get it off. I got you. Nice, nice. Very good. Hell uh, yeah. Write that shit down, players. <laughs> Do 
you prefer to work right on the edge of the disc? I got you, okay. Just to... Not worth the chance. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha, okay, I'm with it, I'm with it. A lot of times I'm at a sleeper and I'll see it. All right. Yeah, back in the day. Okay, I'm with you. Any skate spots in Chicago you're going to be hitting? Dude, downtown is a beautiful area, yeah. Okay, nice. Chance Glass Games and just the boost in general is a great chance to connect with your public and your demographic, the folks that you're trying to market to, the people that are buying your pieces. It's a great way to establish relationships. Just keep that in mind. I know that a lot of you know that. Della Luna and Shiva, we usually see you guys at all of these. Yeah, it's nice to see the Chance homies in the chat who couldn't make it out. You know that we always see here. It makes us feel like you're still part of the party. Alright, it looks like they're warming the pad up back over there, so maybe Ooh, we'll uh, mosey back to the uh, Team Molten Art Classic Zone. Say goodbye to Sirium for now. Do you want this spot? All right. Here comes the Turpinator.
that down. Of course, love. Yeah, it's fun watching these guys work together. They got this down. They've been working for a couple weeks before this already, so it's obviously a plan. Ah, the Turpinator's t-shirt, eh? No? No. Oh. I think it's shrunk in the wash. for tuning in. I hope you're enjoying this view of Champs Chicago. Mostly hanging out here in the glass games area, occasionally taking breaks to show you guys the glass or the, uh, the show floor a little bit. This is Team Molten Arts. Team Molten Arts with Hooves, Job, Karsten. Working on the Turpinator. $30,000 in prizes up. Uh, for the competition here. It's just a small competition. It's Team Molten Art versus Team Everdream. If you've been with us this far, you've seen us uh, watching Team Yusheen, the Faceting, while his teammates get here and get all set up. Their flights were delayed. They didn't get in until 4 in the morning, so they took some time to rest and take care of themselves so they can get here, be fresh for the competition. They're getting everything set up so far. Piece over here we've been working on. It's going in and out of the kiln. Nice big piece. It's obviously gone together a little bit before getting here. Um, there were no limitations on what the competitors could bring. The only request was that this would be a gallery worthy piece. So they're putting their hearts into this. They've been working one or two weeks ahead of time before these three days. We'll be going live for the next couple days as often as the uh, phone batteries let us. So here till this phone battery dies, we'll sit it out, get another phone up and running. Just keep checking back in with us all weekend to see the progression of these pieces. 
theme of the Turpinator is a little bit darker. The uh, Team Everdream has kind of a rainbow thing going on. So, gotta check in with Corey and ask her about the rules as far as the judging goes. I know there's a people's choice. I don't know if that's the determiner of the prize money or not. We'll get that figured out. If you guys think of any questions during this whole thing, feel free to pop them in chat or in the comments. We'll try and uh, make sure we get your, your burning questions answered. Um, I think it was Zachary that asked why Adam is so tall. Uh, he's got stilts on, so you don't really see that. Um, and then he, he wears wedges as well. He feels like being tall gives him the advantage because he can stand above everybody. I'm just playing, none of that's true. goes I've I've got a constant breeze on me I'm pretty sure there are some doors open somewhere but yeah these places are definitely ventilated um, it may not be called ventilation it might be called ventilation at an HVAC level but it's not what you're used to seeing in a traditional glass blowing studio but yeah there's a there's a fire inspector walking around him there in the background you know they're all about safety and making sure everybody's set but there is definitely air movement and I can see one of those big overhead doors there's at least one of those open at one end and uh, probably the other end as well They bring this piece out of the kiln you can certainly feel the heat radiating off of it but just barely because the air movement is such that there's a sort of ventilation going on at least i can stand right in front of that torch and not feel a thing that piece but just barely 
My back is still cold. Man, I don't know if you guys can see the facial expression on this thing, but it is so sweet. Question from the audience for you. It's a bit ridiculous and kind of hard to think about. How did you get so tall? And does it provide you an, an advantage over other glass blowers in this competition? <laughs> actually wear stilts and wedges. They just can't see it because it's off screen. It's all the burning questions, you know. There you go. Yeah. Well balanced meal. Yeah. Yeah man. Genetics. If your parents pump you full of Adderall and stuff, you know you are my height. So. You see over there we go, yeah. So even when flames are not involved, you can see Yushin's got a nice little gallery over there. Fans. Fans all over the place. <laughs> I think Yushin might be done faceting. Maybe. Maybe not.
guys a shot. Here comes Hugh. Ask that question, then, Courtney. Courtney wants to know if that's an incycler. This is 
gonna be sweet. Yeah, totally. All right. You can say hi yourself. You just did. Courtney and Sugar are both watching. Yeah. Morning, you said? Nice. Are you teaching out there or just demoing or? All right. before they get started or they're just like uh, the other guys yeah headed to Corning in August. I think they, yeah, right, it's down, down from 100K.
look at this form. <laughs> Surgical precision here. Awesome for hanging in here with us. Thanks for writing out the technical difficulties this morning. What's that? Did you say technical difficulties? Yeah, when I was trying to get the stream going this morning, there are all sorts of things that I wasn't expecting. Like that first stream where I thought I was recording, like the video died and then it stopped streaming and now we're back. Nothing big. Nothing too big.
don't think I'll say it quite like that, Zachary, but <laughs> but legendary. That's good. so he won't be super offended by the fact that you're calling him really old. <laughs> Glass is cool. Glass is so cool. I was talking with Jop earlier um, about our artistic practices explaining that I may not be a, I may not be a, a flame of a, a, a great flame worker but I have a torch I have a torch station I can play with it but if it's glass I want to manipulate it I want to make it do whatever I want it to do I want to use different techniques with it and I think that's you know that's across the board glass workers we just like glass. Yeah, we got your virtual glass camp right here, huh?
Tatron Tater. Yeah, this is a little Facetron that she borrowed. She's got an Ultratech at home that's a little bit bigger and beefier. But yeah, it's amazing what a little faceting will do to a piece. Adding windows here and there, letting you look into the layers. Seems like there's a lot more of that going on. And I've noticed uh, an uptick in questions about microwave kilns lately in the Boro world too. Yeah, I think having a good fastening machine or good cold working tools in general make the process much more enjoyable. I have a couple of cheap wheels at home that I I don't even really use because the way that you have to change the uh, the grit is really tedious, so I, I don't even bother.
have one more level to facet? What's up? We have one more level to facet? Change things up a bit, yeah. Warm up. <laughs> We're, well, we're gonna let you take a break there. I mean, we're gonna take a break from you at least, so. And I think we'll just walk around a little bit more. Um, Team Molten Art is taking a, a lunch break, it seems like. Um, their piece is just in the kiln, so it can wait for them as, as much as they need it to. folks that are over here, huh? Well, those wonders, another distributor for you folks that might want to go to a trade show, but are scared to talk to people or don't want to bother talking to people, rather. Jellyfish taking orders got a variety of pieces that they sell, but then they come to these shows, they talk to people, they get orders, they got a nice team of folks down there in Bisbee, Arizona, work in production. And then we've got, always got nice big fancy screens over here. make it out and at least check it out. Depends on what your goal is, you know? Show, show dogs. So yeah, there's there's some money in this business. The size of this screen, the setup, got CBD gummies. I wonder if there's samples. Hmm. Should let Mike know he needs to go around and look for samples. Oh, we got Grav over here. <coughs> These Grav pieces are awesome. Can I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, of course, of course. Look at these pieces, guys. My favorite on milk park. I love this too. They are. They're adorable. You got your sippy cups with the straws, your slush cups, there we go. All these are sip series. We have like a martini shaker, martini glass, milk carton, coffee glass, Very cool. Thank you. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you. <laughs> good, how are you? Good, good. Thank you. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Ooh, we have a fudge booth. Chocolate moonshine. Gourmet fudge moonshine bars. Luxury. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. I would love to try one. Thank you. Oh. oh, thank you. Dark chocolate almond. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yum. So, yeah, this is Mike Sticks walking around Champs getting samples. Yeah. We got booth babes everywhere. Little bit more intimate than the 
in the Vegas towns, but there is still a lot to see here. And this show floor keeps going. Some Red Bull over there. Everything you might need for your um, your shop, and uh, yeah, they're also having a like a buyer contest here. Something about winning seventy five thousand dollars as a shop owner, seventy five thousand dollars to stock your shop. So everything you can imagine. So yeah, the individual artists, it's a, it's a smaller section, Courtney, and it is over by the glass games. And I think I noticed, well, I'd have to do a clicker count. I've been pretty focused on the glass games itself, but um, it kind of seemed like maybe there are 10 booths. Cake sticks, oh my gosh. So much to see here. Lots of beautiful colors. These booths are total eye candy. They're competing for all the buyers' attention. So we've definitely wandered away from kind of the, um, the glassy section. And we'll work our way over there because I bet that other piece, well, I guess the Molten Arts guys, they're kind of taking lunch. So it's really nothing to, nothing to watch over there at the moment. And you guys have been hanging in here with, with me for quite a while. Thank you so much for being here. I hope you're enjoying this kind of look at champs and what goes on here. We'll head, at, we'll head back over there shortly, Courtney, and, and we'll see exactly how many people. Um, so this is, yeah, this is kind of it for as, as far as like, you know, what's going on out in the outer reaches. Um, there's a bunch of scales here. This is how you clean your glass. Um, one puff and you're hooked. I don't know, it sounds like drugs. <laughs> Q-tips. I, I got a phone charger. There's a whole booth full of phone chargers, which is really good because I forgot mine. Um, different, different vape tech. of a dead end. I don't think we're really supposed to. Thank you. All right. Headed back towards the glass section. It's definitely lunch break. Okay, so getting closer. You know, there are some imports. There's some silicone pieces. It's always going to be multiple price points that a shop is trying to hit you can't just cater to i mean unless your demographic is very very specific and you know that you're only selling to people that are going to buy a certain type of glass then you got to kind of diversify and have something for everybody right so we're back over here in the small, uh, the intimate section. We've got um, Tennessee. I know there's one in Daytona, but I don't know about Tennessee. How are you doing? Good, how are you Good. We're live on torchtalk.com. Guys, it's Nick. <laughs> right, and we got, uh, got some goodies over here. ABRs over there, of course, selling some glass. It's Kevin Dankman talking with Elbow over there. Got uh, Chad G over here selling some pieces in his booth. <laughs> and 
then of course Waldo's Wonders is here and I think I showed you Glassics is here. It seems like a um, few more distributors here than individual artists, but there's certainly individual artist tables as well. Back in the glass game section we are, the jellyfish booth. Um, yeah, so most of the like the American glass is usually surrounding the glass games booth and the glass games booth is right over here to my right. Got a couple of wholesalers. Empire Glassworks over here. <clears throat> yeah, Glass X is around the corner over here. So that's kind of a tour, kind of a small tour. There's there's definitely more to see that you guys didn't quite. You know, I, I haven't gone to the far reaches yet. And here's a. Uh, the um, the team booths, you know, they've got the artists competing, so of course they've got all their pieces here. The idea behind the glass games, you know, you show buyers what you can make and what they might be able to expect, and then they get excited and they want to buy your pieces. There you go. All right. So looks like we're back from lunch over here. To adjust this monopod again the leg keeps kind of slipping so uh, bear with me if it gets a little shaky So I thought I'd come by and let him watch you and you alone. So how's it coming along? You guys feeling a little refreshed after the lunch break? Oh, we didn't have a lunch break. <laughs> oh no? Okay. No. Um, but yeah, we're good. Okay, good. Yeah. The banana break. I saw a banana. Uh, there you go. The, uh, <laughs> The amount of hours we're putting in today is nothing like how we were doing um, when we came down here. Yeah. Yeah. So like, they were like 12 to 14 hour days. They were crazy. Oh wow. So this is like this is a, a cakewalk then. Oh, I mean, it's definitely a cakewalk, but it's, <laughs> it's not as it's, uh, it's rolling. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. Where are we at? 35 people an hour. And Let's see. Yeah. And you still have battery? Apparently. Alright. Cool. Watch this.
right, I just got the 20% battery warning. stick here with you guys um, for a bit and find a good good stopping point and then uh, I guess maybe I can plug my phone in even. I forgot I have a, a power cord attached to my body. for any noise. There we go. wants to make a pendant after this show. He looks pretty fascinated. <laughs> yes, the fashion here is on point. These guys definitely color coordinated today.
<laughs> Mike was making a joke about that earlier, Mealy. What's that? Wonder if a fart can set off that <laughs> gas leak detector. Yeah. <laughs> I never pretended to have a high brow sense of humor. <laughs> I like being able to dance with this monopod, actually. Yeah. Yeah, we should interview the fire homie. Uh, somebody, uh, somebody said that. Uh, no, we should. Yeah. Oh, yeah. When there's a moment, he was very interested. He seemed very interested. Uh, Della Luna said we should do a video of him making a pendant next. Mm. Kind of seemed like he wanted to. Awesome. Right, yeah. So I believe this is this is day one and then there's a day two and day three is uh, awards, right? Occasionally, Mealy. If either of us were actually on the computer, we could get rid of that. But in the meantime, just ignore those. <laughs> oh, a bot popped up. What? A bot popped up. Naked Fun. <laughs> yeah, Courtney was like, "Ooh, Naked Fun and Torch Duck." Oh boy. <laughs> well, I mean. Is a bot in the chat? Thanks, Zachary.
Maybe you have to make some mosaics with that piece instead. Bring it back to life in a different form. Again? Okay, I noticed that. I don't know, there was some sort of tick and then there was a comment that said there was no video. Let me know if that, um, if that changed. Good. Thanks, Zachary. <laughs> That's awesome, Tater. We're watching you, too. <laughs> said he spilled his bong and I had just said again. <laughs> Dink brother is watching you.
ride on. I, I did put that together, Zachary. I thought maybe you were a secret code. I figured it out. So, Team Molten Art here, hard at work. Talked to Team Everdream earlier. Eugene's got some more fastening to do. It sounds like he might take a break before he fastens the mouthpiece. Switch over to the torch, do something for a bit, come back. Again, this glass games is a bit different than most glass games. Normally the glass games are about 40 competitors. Everybody's vying for a spot at the uh, the Champs Masters Winter Games in Vegas where all the previous winners come back to compete for even more cash prizes. This time around the spotlight is on six artists in two teams. This side we've got Team Molten Arts. We've got Karsten, we've got Jop, we've got Hoops. They're all working together here on the Turbinator. They started a couple of weeks ago in, well, maybe more than a couple of weeks ago. They worked for two weeks. They worked for two weeks down in Hoops' Huntington Beach studio. Karsten came down from Oregon. Jop came out from just outside Philly. They worked grueling 12 to 14 hour days getting all the prep ready for this. They're back here to finish putting this all together in the hopes of winning $20,000 in cash prizes. The other team gets another 10,000. And then they can sell the piece afterwards for 100 or more. Yeah, let me know if I can facilitate the sale of this process for you guys, anybody. <laughs> we'll just add that onto the top. <laughs> Norm. Shall we start the bidding at 10,000? <laughs> Jesus. 
So if you are on your if you're on your phone, you can probably go yeah. in there and mix it. We're about it. to see our audience drop because everybody's going to watch the porn. <laughs> Come on to y'all. <laughs> log in there and remove them myself. But I think you can. Find out where this terrible website is at. Yes. Get the exact Mike, URL. Mike, Mike needs to do some research. Copy to the clipboard. I mean, delete the comments. Oh, a keyboard full of bong water, huh? <laughs> Oh, Jesus. I think you can just lock and delete all Man, of their comments. Man, my God. Yeah. <laughs> Look up their domain register and then sign them up for timeshare. <laughs> virus on your computer or elsewhere I guess all right I think I got all the porn you should be able to like mix it all I don't know way. I hit the user but I still see him in my weird exactly tater all right Mike has removed all the naked fun I thought I did. No more naked fun in Torch Talk. <laughs> All right, I added a couple of moderators as well. Ah, got some moderators suddenly. Ask and ye shall receive. Oh, Luna's got responsibilities. Quick, quick. <laughs> All right, y'all be good. Like, what do you mean, Norm banned everybody but the porn box? <laughs> French, Della Luna, that means you have responsibilities. Oh no, Norm's got a wrench too. They're just noticing that they're mods. You guys now have the ability to remove comments and block users so this is not a this is not a responsibility to take lightly now they're free to advertise their porn sites there you go mike says you can advertise your porn sites now <laughs> Alright, here we go. Oh, and Zachary too.
<laughs> yes, maybe. Exactly. I think Mike still has that uh, domain. Pretty sure it points to Torch Talk. Or maybe the Discord channel. Sure, Courtney, sure. <laughs> Welcome to the party, Chris. Yeah, this piece is pretty amazing. It's the Turbinator. Fucking teamwork. What's that from? Tenacious team. make it, but I'll order it from Zanzibar. Not a glass out here representing like we're we're like always like we like glass god. Not all glass is like representing glass Satan. Like yeah. that shit's about to tink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like what? Don't you put that on us, Ricky Bobby? <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Bobby. <laughs> when the table got hit. Adam, do you ever deal with any kind of devitrification just from them being in out of the kiln so much or the parts that aren't really going to fuck with stay good or? Uh, yeah, sometimes like weird shit happens on these like, 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 like
Check for that, like at the end. Do you kind of do like a final inspection and look for those? I do it kind of as I go. All right. Like adding the stuff, like just so I know the panel is really like stable. You know, stable. Nice. I assume you just avoid colors that don't like to be garaged for too long or that sort of thing, or? Uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, I typically try to use colors that are very like uh, tested. curious about how you're able to do it so long and yeah. I'm just like yeah that's kind of what we use baby that's Bora that's like yeah. what it's made for man it's like I, mean, the, I think the riskiest color I've really used so far is the, the aqua blue uh, color and then yeah. like, like that color. the chrome in those doing some of the Imeranis with print lately and I'll use those colors that I won't stripe. Like I won't stripe that aqua because like the anecdotal thing for Millie Makers is that the aquas and any of those blues, those chrome based blues, whatever, uh, they don't like to be in the it's going to be problematic for the end user, but yeah, for what you're talking about, I, I would do that. you pull out your phone again? There was a question, but I missed it. Oh, what? Wait, let's see. <laughs> it's got to refresh. Oh, no, mine's got to refresh. I don't know. Okay. Had to do with the diameter of something you was using. All right, here we go. Is there a particular size diameter for all the connections? I see, all right. Is there a minimum size for the connections between pieces that you aim for, or does that really matter? I try to keep it as small as I can, really. All right, so not large connections between the pieces. Minimal glass, interesting, okay. Okay. Do the bigger connections present more risk? Yeah, definitely. Okay. More risk. It's harder to like well. All right. A lot of times, like when I'm welding like a flat panel to a bar. Yeah. You know when you go. Right. Fascinating. Dank, that was a dank question and that was a dank answer. Thank you, dog. 
Yeah. Good catch on that. Yeah, Kerry was like, we saw a question, I had to pull out my chat just to see it. But yeah, no, I'm glad we did, because that's fascinating. I also would have imagined it might have been the other way around. Or not too big, but the idea that, yeah. I'll tell you, do you know where your battery is at? Did you see it whenever you popped the screen up? Oh, no. You know, it, it gave me the 20% warning, which is why I plugged it in. Oh, so, so you're plugged in. You're good? Should be good. All right. As long as I don't drain it faster than it charges. Cool. Like, I don't want to stop, and we got a lot of people enjoying the show, but I didn't want right, to yeah. end it randomly. All right, then it sounds like we might be good. I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick. Do you need anything, love? Are you hungry? You got food? You got all your snacks? What do you got? You good? Um, I could eat a, a, a half of one of those protein cookies that is like. Where are those? In your bag? Yeah, in the top front pocket. The team Ever Dream is starting to think. Starting to think about things. I see a skull in the kiln over there. Very nice. Well. Hot tip, hot tip. Here we, we can see Nate and Yush, they're uh, strategizing right now, obviously. Strategizing, I can see, yes. <laughs> ah. Nice, nice. I like it. I like it. done fastening that big bad boy and that mouthpiece still needs to be faceted. Like the camera angle here makes Adam look extra tall and Nate look extra short. Thank you.
behind the scenes. Thanks to all the champs, employees, and staff that are putting this together. Hard working folks. It's the birthday girl, Victoria. Courtney says happy birthday. Oh, Back over here to this. Show you guys some glass art that's hanging out over here. walk you guys around a little bit more later when I'm not tied up with this monopod. Really show you some of the, the pieces over here at the booths. Kind of reached a little lull. Thanks again to everybody for being here. We'll just keep streaming for as long as you guys want to keep watching. Um, over here by the glass games, we've got our little glass corner. Well, there's wonders out here representing. Busy little corner. Look at the fun pizza. Thanks for being here, Chris. Thanks everybody for being here. Everyone says hi. Wish you could be here too. This is what it looks like if you decide to come to a champ, interact with the buyers, Talk about your work, take orders, bring pieces to sell. Everybody's got a different strategy. Some people like to come to these shows, take orders and nothing else. So they have a nice bare bones booth. Take orders and then go home and produce things. Some people bring a bunch of things and sell what they've got and take orders. Some people send stuff with distributors. This leg, this leg. Ah, uh, thank you. I thought they were Thank you for being in here and putting in the effort too. Thanks for your support. But I saw ABR is over here, of course. You know, some of you weren't here earlier to see this, but ABR brought a bunch of tubing. Look at all this. They brought some tubing. They got some special tubing they brought with Boro Batch. It's a uh, a green and UV pink tubing. Mod, see if you can't just block that user. Hi, Ross. We can't get enough of you. <laughs> tools, 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 colors. Look at all that. All right, we're gonna walk around this way now. Okay, so we got the Helix guys over here, the dip devices. Everybody needs something to carry your pieces in and protect them, right? You got a piece water, you gotta be able to clean your pieces, right? Of course. And we got some distributors over here. Got some wood pieces. Say hi to Glass X again. So lots of folks, if you can't make it, these are the folks that are gonna show up here for you. 
Take orders, sell your pieces, get you your buyers. You got fun drinks, exotic sodas. So if your shop needs to fill out your coolers, so sell other things for folks, right? Sure. It's so pretty here. So many colorful distractions. The Raw booth in Vegas one time. They uh, had Jay and Silent Bob. That was pretty sweet. Mike and I got to go see Jay and Silent Bob. White Rhino. More glass, the glass house. And towards the end of the hall, you've got your break session, your break room, your restrooms and snacks and whatnot. CBD's represented here, Delta 8's here, Kratom's here. Pretty much everything you could ever want for your shop is going to be here. Price points for everybody. Ooh, look at that stylish bag. I bet that was a freebie. I want a bag like that. Ooh, look at these socks. Look at these beautiful socks. Oh, those are great. Oh, I love, <laughs> I love these socks. I just got a compliment on my socks too because uh, I've got some, some marijuana socks on. More clothing. Ooh, these are pretty. Poor Alice. Hi. <laughs> Ooh, gumball machines. Snoop Dogg's here. With Martha Stewart. back towards the uh, the glass games here again let's see what kind of action we can see what's going on now Fix this tripod leg again. <sighs> we'll just wait for Mike to come back again. Um, yeah, everybody say hi to Hugh. Hi, Hugh. All right, now for real, it's lunch time or at least snack time. I mean, I love that you guys are still hanging in here, but 
I don't know what to show you. You know, I'll be here. out of the monopod, I mean, my phone. And we're gonna go look at some, some glass up close, maybe. All right, here we go. It's lunchtime. All right. All right, here we go. We've got some pieces to see. Oh yeah, I wanted to show you guys these guys. Check this out. These guys work. Look at that. He was driving these around. Skidding out. Little alien driver in there. Right, now we're gonna go check out some of the Teen Molten Art pieces over in their booth. Now I got you guys up close and personal. We can see these guys. Look at those opals. Zachary. This is the way. Oh, 
That piece is so clean, get it? Clean. That's really cool. They're also cool. Are you guys having a good time? Yeah. Right on. Me too. Yeah. I have about 45 people hanging out just like chilling with us, torchtalk.com. Watching the glass games and checking out all the great art over here. Octopus. <laughs> Pizza Kid, tell him to do a whirlwind. Wait a minute, okay. Do a whirlwind? I don't know. I said, if I see that pizza guy again, tell him to do a whirlwind? That was the request. All right, next time, Courtney, next time. <laughs> Everybody in this part of the floor is grabbing some lunch. Champs takes care of the competitors. They got pizza, Chicago style pizza, I would imagine. A little pepperoni, some cheese, and some sausage, what I was overhearing. So everybody's taking a little break. Thanks to the Champs sponsors. ABR, UST, Bethlehem Burners, North Jersey Diamond Wheel for bringing us the Champs Glass Games. Thanks to Glass Central sponsors for helping us get here to cover these games. To bring you along for the ride. Here, let's get an up close look at some of this prep, huh? Now that I've ditched the monopod for a second. Sparkles. What color is it? 
is this gray, silvery? I, I, it looks sparkly. Exactly, it sparkles. Nice. Here's some of our prep for that piece, the Terminator. Go look at Team Everdream's piece that they've got to this point. Lunch time, so it might be time to take a break and let your phone charge or whatever. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna check out this last piece and then maybe we'll take a break. All right. Here's some of the fastening that's been done over here. Right. This is the piece that Yush has been working on, right? Fastening all of this. I'll take you to see some babies next. This is the section that Yushin's been working with. up close of his setup here. He's kind of tearing it down, I guess, a little bit, so. All right, babies. Babies are coming next. It is Chicago-style pizza. Oh, yeah. All right. All right, I heard babies. I heard people asking for babies. It's not an eight-armed baby. Mushroom belt. Okay, y'all, so I love and appreciate the fact that there are 48, 47 people in chat here. I'm gonna flip you around so I can talk to you. Thank you so much for being here with us. This is exciting. Uh, as Mike said, there's not really much going on right now. Uh, it is lunchtime, so folks are kind of finishing up lunch. I'm gonna make sure that my battery's charged so we can come back at you with another really long stream this afternoon. Um, please join us again. It's been great having you. It's been great chatting with you. I really appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. And we will see you again probably shortly.